How's it everyone? Welcome to another court checklist right here on Open Court. So the topic of today's checklist is tennis stringing machines, like the one you see right behind me here. Now there are many different types of stringing machines, but most of them fall into three types. So today I'll briefly go over the three different types and the pros and cons of each. So the first type of stringing machine are drop weight machines, and they look something like this. There's a large cylinder attached to, a, to an arm, to a bar, basically, and you turn the cylinder to adjust what tension you want, and then when you pull tension, you just lower the lever, and you try to make it as flat as possible, so parallel to the ground, 180 degrees. Now, what are the pros to a drop weight machine? They're cheap. That's about it. Honestly, I do not recommend a drop weight machine unless you're on a really tight budget and you only string for yourself. I've seen some drop weight machines as low as $200. Um, that's just for a basic machine. It's a two-point mounting system. It doesn't have a base, so there's no swivel clamps. You have to use floating clamps to uh, tension or rather clamp off the strings. The other good thing about drop weight machines is that they're low maintenance. You don't really have to fix or recalibrate anything because of the, the construction of it. And they're very compact. You can just put it on a table right in the corner of your room. But that's about it. Now getting into the cons of a drop weight machine, the biggest con of them is that they're very inconsistent in terms of tensioning. The reason for that is because in order to pull tension using a drop weight machine, you lower the arm and you basically have to adjust it by hand so that it's flat parallel to the ground 180 degrees. It does not lock into place so it causes some variance between each and every string. Every string you string if it's not perfectly straight then it causes the tension to be all over the place and it causes an inconsistent tensioning. Also it takes a very long time because you have to manually straighten out the arm and because of that it causes human error. So I do not recommend a drop weight machine unless you only want to string for yourself. Now the second type of stringy machine is called a crank slash lockout machine. And these look like this. As you can see, there is a lever with a gripper where you put the string through and you basically just turn a knob which will then tighten a spring which will set the tension. And you put the string in the gripper and you turn the crank by hand and once it reaches the desired tension, the spring will lock into place. So the pros with a crank machine is that it pulls tension very accurately compared to a drop weight machine because the spring will lock out into position once you reach the desired tension. So at the very least, as long as you don't touch the knob, every string will be pretty consistent. It also takes less time than a drop weight machine because you don't have to fiddle with that stupid arm. It'll lock into place so that it'll be the same every time. It's also fairly low maintenance. As long as you zero out the spring after you finish stringing every time, you won't have to recalibrate or change the spring for a while. Now getting into the cons of a crank machine, the spring, you may have to recalibrate that spring every few years or you might just have to change it out. It depends. If you zero out the spring, every time after you finish stringing, then you probably won't have to recalibrate your spring for a very long time. The other con to a crank machine is that it provides no additional features or functions. It's basically just for stringing a racket, just tensioning. It doesn't offer anything like what the third type of stringing machine is that I'm gonna get into right now. So the third type of stringing machine is an electronic stringing machine. And you guys have probably seen these at professional tournaments or tennis pro shops. What's good about an electronic stringing machine? Well, out of the three different types of stringing machines, it pulls tension the most accurately because it's machine operated. There's no human error involved in this. You basically push buttons, set the tension you want, push another button, it'll tension it out for you, it'll set it, and then you just clamp it. Also, it takes much less time than a drop weight or a crank machine because you just push a button, it tensions, and that's it. The biggest pro to an electronic stringing machine is that it comes with additional functions slash features that a drop weight and a crank machine does not have. For example, a constant pull feature and the pre-stretch feature. What's a constant pull feature? Basically what it is is that when you press the button to tension out the string, sometimes when you're clamping off, the string will actually lose a little bit of tension. And what a constant pull feature does is that the, the stringer 
will recognize that the string you're stringing is losing tension and so it'll be constantly pulling tension to make sure that it stays at the tension that you set. This is not possible with a crank or a drop weight machine so this causes the tensioning of each string to actually be a little bit lower than what you set it at if you're not careful. A pre-stretch feature, so for example, if you string at 50 pounds with a 10% pre-stretch, when you press that button to tension, it'll actually pull the string to 55 pounds because five pounds extra is 10% of 50. So it'll pull it at 55 pounds, it'll sit there for a split second, and then it'll go back to 50 pounds. So it's pre-stretching a little bit. This is often used in stringing natural gut. Or if you want to mitigate the loss in tension from polyester, you can also utilize a pre-stretch feature when you're stringing polyester. Now getting into the cons of electronic stringing machines, the biggest con is that they are very, very expensive. Some of them often run anywhere between three to $5,000. Some of the high-end Yonex ones that you see at some professional tournaments can be as expensive as eight to $10,000. In my opinion, if you're a home stringer, you definitely do not need an electronic stringing machine unless you just want all of those extra features. If you're an aspiring professional stringer or you're thinking about setting up a pro shop, it might be worth the investment, but I would not spend more than three to $4,000 for an electronic stringer. So out of the three types of stringing machines, drop weight, crank, and electronic, which type do I recommend? Well, for the most part, I think the crank stringing machine will fulfill most people's needs. It pulls tension very accurately, not as accurate as electronic, but definitely more accurate than a drop weight machine. It takes up less time, and also it's probably within most people's budgets. You can get a good crank machine for about five to $700. The crank machine you see behind me here was about $500. And there are tabletop versions like this where you can just set it on top of table. Some come with stands, those will be a little bit more expensive, but not too much. You can probably get a good stand uh, crank machine for about six to $700. So if you're thinking about getting a stringing machine, if you're not a professional stringer, I think the crank machine will definitely be enough for you. But if you want all of those extra features, maybe you can get yourself a cheap tabletop electronic feature for about eight to 800 to a thousand dollars. So I hope this information was useful to you. If you guys get your own stringer and string your own rackets, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. If you guys have any specific suggestions as to brands of stringing machines, or if there are other types of stringing machines that you guys know of that I missed, let us all know in the comments down below. If you guys like this content and wanna see more like it, be sure you overhead smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you on an open court.